Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here from Mr. Build It, and in today's video, I'll show how I made this outdoor concrete gas fire pit table. So without wasting any time, let me show you how I made it, and let's get into the video. Let's go. Now, before we start building, let's talk about sponsors today's video, Squarespace. Guys, times are different now. You don't need to hire a coder, a webmaster to do all this complicated coding to create your own personal website. Squarespace makes it easy with simple click and drag options to create your own personal customized website. With hundreds of designs and templates to choose from, every design automatically comes with a unique mobile experience that automatically matches the overall style of your website. So your content will look awesome on every device. Squarespace has the necessary tools to get your business off the ground with e-commerce templates, inventory management, quick and simple checkout processes, simple and secure payment processes. Whatever you're selling, whatever you're offering, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look their best online. Be among the growing community of makers and creatives like myself who choose Squarespace to express their creative visions. So do yourself a favor, go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Build It, that's all one word, to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. These are the couches, the benches, the outdoor patio furniture that I've built and I hope you guys seen the video. Uh, it came out great and they're holding up really well. Now it's been like maybe a one full winter season and they're looking great and they're comfortable. Now he's the only kicker. We got nothing right here. I'm thinking we build ourselves a coffee table. But here's the thing, I also wanted to have an extra special feature, like a fire pit. Now you might be thinking, wait, don't you already have a fire pit? I do. It's right there. But sometimes I just want to come outside with a cup of coffee and just turn on a gas fire grill thing and just kind of enjoy the atmosphere. Let me show you what I want to come up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a top for it. Have enough of a ledge to put your coffee or whatever snacks down. I want this to be the grill area. That's my best illustration of grill. This will be concrete. And then what I'd like it to do is come down as a whole circle as well. That'll be there. It'll be nice and weatherproof. It'll be fireproof because, or at least fire retardant at the best of our abilities because the concrete here. And then we'll run a cable right here or a hose right there. And our propane will sit somewhere out of sight, out of mind, maybe decorated with something like that. So the temperature right now is reading 92 and it's supposed to get to 99. I, I don't do well in the heat. My brain gets all fried. It'll be funny on camera. We need uh, two wheels to be exactly perfect or matching replica of each other. The way you, this, you, the, the way this, the way this would do, cause that's not a word. Listen, man, this needs to cool down. Uh, the way this would work is you would screw the uh, screw right in the middle of the plywood. You would tie a string around that screw loosely so it could still spin. And then on top of it, we're gonna tie the string along the pencil. Again, the, it has to rotate without kind of winding up. And then we're gonna trace a nice radius around. Another secret to it, hold the pencil at the base and keep it as straight as you can. And for the most part, it comes out pretty good. <laughs> do is actually create this thing to be like weight bearing um, and to do this is I figured out we're gonna cut up two by fours and we're gonna stack them sideways that way it'll allow for us to actually retain this radius the best that we can so we can wrap it later on oh and by the way I'm so sorry if the mic sounds kind of funky I uh, I kind of damaged it and so it's kind of making weird noises I bear with me this episode I next video I'll make sure getting your mic but just be nice in the comments
really cool. It kind of looks like one of those uh, 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 paddleboard boat. No, no, the, what is casino boat? I, I don't know. Just an old school boat that goes in the water paddling all this stuff. Anywho, I bought quarter inch, uh, four by eight sheet of plywood. I think quarter inch is small enough or thin enough to be able to wrap it. Also, a thing like this, I don't know if I've ever seen it being done before. So I'm kind of excited that I get to try this myself for the first time. I didn't know if the quarter inch plywood would actually bend like that. And it did. A house wrap is another name for it. And uh, it just prevents you know moisture getting through. We're going to staple it on it. And then we're going to staple on the builder's felt. And this is the stuff that if you guys seen my built-in barbecue grill video, and if you haven't, shame on you, go watch it. Um, wrap it around. And that is the same stuff they'll also put on roofing before they put roofs down. And then the final step of this whole thing is we're going to wrap it with lath it's the metal galvanized steel it's like a honeycomb shape again in my last video you'll see it when i put stone on we're gonna put like a mortar or a thin set or like a stucco on this thing and we need the metal lath to be there to be able to take all that material on it so let's keep going until we make mistakes <laughs> All right, let's start figuring out our concrete scenario. It's interesting because I've never done a circular pour. I've always done a square, a rectangle. Now, here's what I'm thinking. It's a four by eight sheet of melamine. We're gonna cut it in half. It'll be four by four. Here it is. I'm gonna place two by four blocks in a circular pattern and then fit and bend that plywood inside of it. I don't know, if I have a, it might work, I don't know. I'm gonna line the edges all the way around to make sure everything's sealed and it gives you a round over edge. Then I'll use a caulking tool to give it that round over edge. I'm gonna flip this upside down, lay it right in there, align it exactly where I trace it out and I'm gonna put a bead of silicone around it. Now why? Because the back side of this is actually gonna be the top side when we flip it over and that's gonna be the perfect seat, including this little tapered edge here. That's why I'm not flipping it the other way around. Let's put some sweat in. So I'm gonna use a reciprocating saw without a blade to get this thing to vibrate so all the air bubbles can come to the top and we would be left with the fewest amount of imperfections. So just hold it to the side of your mold and just... 
All right, folks, perfect opportunity to start working on the barrel here. One thing we gotta do real quick is cut a hole on top and the bottom. Once that's done, we're gonna start laying on some thin set. Give it the first coat to just conceal the metal and then after that, maybe build up an extra quarter inch. That way it has that cement look and a round function. So with that being said, let's get messy. The idea or the game plan is gonna to be to kind of hold it at the bottom and then scrape it upward. I think this will work okay. Can you hear the uh, confidence in my voice? <laughs> hey, what do you think, is it gonna turn out okay? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna let it cure for a few hours and then we're gonna put up another coat. As you can see, this is the rough side, this is the finished side. And the way I did is I just diluted this thin set with the flex bond far more that it falls off like water. Once it evaporates, it'll give us this more of a uniform finish. So this is um, Portland cement. Um, it's usually about 10 bucks a bag. You don't need a bunch of it. You just need like a cup worth. Take that in and you start patching everything up. You can also do with these air bubbles if you find a few on top. Um, it's not a big deal. This stuff dries really quickly, so move faster. Like this stuff has already dried pretty quickly because it's 100 degrees outside. Okay, first couple of coats are on and uh, we're just gonna let it sit overnight. Talking gas fittings here. So this is the part that goes to the grill section. I never know how to do this when people go, if it's brass, you don't need to put anything on there, but I was also taught that you could also be safe than sorry. Um, and I, by putting just a little bit of tape is not gonna do you any harm. So I'm gonna air on the safe side. Nope, this is for the jet. Sorry. Yeah, keep in mind this one has a direction of the gas flow, so you'll know where it goes. No, I was right. I was right. I was right. That's where it goes. <sighs> okay. All of our uh, plumbing is all ready to install. We're going to take this shutoff valve, set it into that hole that we created, and then use little of uh, these galvanized steel brackets to hold up plumbing and then secure it in place. We're then gonna thread this on the outside. That's like a nice fancy phalange, also keeps it tight. It, I don't know if you noticed, but it's sitting on three quarter inch pieces of uh, wood just so it's not pressing down on the rug and you know air can flow through. And then at the same time, we're finally going to throw some uh, Teflon tape on top of the burner, screw this on, bring the uh, tabletop over and that should be ready to go. And of course we have to still wet sand it. That'll be the finishing touches. Big things are happening. So one problem I'm encountering is that uh, this won't thread um, on the inside of that. And there's obviously a transition piece there. Cause if you look inside, uh, it's kind of flared out and I think there's a piece that I'm missing in the back. There it is. Change of plans. I don't want this cable or hose to get compromised. So I'm just gonna put a hole right here and then I'll feed the cable from the inside out. Just peace of mind. So now let's uh, wet sand this. Um, 
Careful not to take too much off, reason why we'll start seeing the stone that's underneath it. But other than that, uh, we're getting there. We're really getting there. concrete is very very porous maybe you left a glass of red wine on here maybe spilled some coffee if you don't seal or clog those pores it's gonna be almost impossible to get that stuff out so we're gonna use a sealer this is an impregnator 511 I've used this stuff before my father-in-law taught me about using this stuff on the granite that he does and so what we're just gonna do is start applying it uh, putting in an excess amount that it's damp and then let it sit for three to five minutes before we start wiping off the excess of it I got a few drops that's kind of splashed on the sides where the thin set was. Now I'm kind of thinking, what if we just do the whole thing in sealer and make it match a little bit better? So, I don't know, making discoveries. Home Depot sells these lava rock brands by Mr. Barbecue. They're six bucks a piece. Now the reason why you don't want to use regular rocks is because regular rocks, when they're gonna heat up, they're possibly gonna explode and hurt yourself or somebody else. The lining of the plumbing here was a little bit off. I had it set up for natural gas, not set up for propane. Propane has an extra attachment, which these little air entrainment device port that follows the direction. What happens is it mixes the air with the propane to allow for a cleaner burn. From my understanding from the directions, if you don't install this piece right there, you would have a little soot built up on your lava rock. So I just went back, I had to buy a half inch brass uh, coupling right there, screwed on. And now I could thread it back onto our burner and we'll have a nice clean burn. Thanks so much for sticking around watching another one of my videos. It means the world to me. If you're brand in the channel and you like builds like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every time I put a brand new video out. Now remember guys, courage and sweat. That's our motto. That's what we live by. We're not trained professionals. This is the first time we've done a project like this, but we need the courage to at least try these intimidating projects. I mean, propane gas is a flammable gas. It could get dangerous, but we are taking on the courage to try something difficult and we're applying the sweat, the hard work to get through the frustrating parts, to learn and be better for the next build. And ultimately we're gonna be better builders and better people in the end. Make sure you check me out all my social media channels. All the links will be down in the description below as well as the merch section, which helps support the channel and my Patreon page where I share some of the behind the scene footage and tips and tricks along the way that I wish I learned ahead of time going into these projects. So tune in this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye.